previously on Cyber Haggis. Hi everyone and welcome back to the Cyber Haggis. Half machine, half awful. Thanks everyone who entered the competition last week. I'll announce the winners of the fully cycled goodies at the end of this video. And remember, to hit like and subscribe, leave a comment below. Scully has agreed to do a pirouette for us as way of introduction, but the main event is the fully cycled harpy. Now you may remember from last week I had already undercoated him grey and I also washed him with a watered down black ink to delineate his features and this week I even managed to pronounce delineate correctly. During this video I'm going to talk you through the process I used to paint this miniature. There are four basic stages. First I'm going to block in the base colours. Then I'm going to wash the whole mini with Agrax Earthshade. After that, I'll highlight up with the base colours and progressively bite our highlights after that. And then finally, I'll add in the terrain and scatter pieces to his base. Here are the paints I'm going to be using on this project. So I've got the major manufacturers in there. I've got some Vallejo, I've got some Citadel, I've got some Army Painter. But the two down the front that you might not be familiar with, or you might have even looked over in the past. And these are the Revel Aqua Colours in the square pots there. Know what you're thinking revel isn't that like for model planes for model tanks don't they mainly deal in enamel paints but no um i find that a lot of the revel paints are actually equal to or even better than your classic army painters vallejos citadels whatever um especially the reds i find they've got a lot of pigment one of the other bonuses of the revels is that they're fairly cheap and um, they're quite thick paints so while you do have to water them down quite a lot it does mean that they go further they're also a lot more readily available on the high street than your citadel paints or your army painter or whatever because you can just get them out of places like Hobbycraft. Uh, so if you don't have the time or the patience to wait for paints to turn up you know you can just go and get some revel straight off the shelf and i use them on quite a lot of my projects i've got quite a big range of the revel paints just sat on my shelf here for the harpy's skin, I'm going to use the rust and the scent or skin. Uh, for his beak and talons, I'm going to use the Iraqi sand. For the tree, I'm going to use the beige brown and some of that green ink that you can see there. The wings, I'm not going to base coat. I'm just going to highlight up with a neutral grey and maybe some white. The Agrax earth, earth shade there is for the wash. And then I've got some black. I only really use that in this model for going around the base. The glistening blood and the red revel that you can see there, they're going to be used for the harpy's eye. I do something like 90% of my painting using a single brush, normally an army paint or character brush. Unfortunately, I found that in the last year or so, the quality of them has gone down quite a lot. So you got a lot more split in. They just don't seem to last as long as they did. So I've moved more on to the Windsor and Newton Series 7. They can be a bit intimidating first time you use them because they are that bit more expensive but the quality definitely is there so let's move on to getting some paint onto this model and here he is ready to go so as i said previously i've already spray painted him uh, gray and then i have hit him with a watered down black ink wash and what this does it just makes all the features easier to see makes them a bit easier to paint but it also means that the recessed areas are already a little bit darker which is what you kind of want for a sort of evil uh, nasty looking ratty monster like this so at this point he's already for stage one blocking in the base colors the first thing I did was paint his skin. I used the Revel Aqua Color Rust because it's this kind of pinky rat tail color. Really makes him look nasty. Then I used the Iraqi Sand for his beak and for his talons. For his wings and feathers, I didn't actually use any base color because I already liked the color it was just after the black wash. What I'm going to do with that is just hit it with the Agrax Earth Shade and hopefully that will give it a nice nasty sort of stained look. Um, and then after that just highlight up with a neutral grey and some white. Now unfortunately at this point I realised that I hadn't actually painted the branch that he's on. Of course by the time I'd realised I had done too much filming, I'd done too much painting the model. But what I did was I went back, I painted it with a beige brown. And then I painted it with the Agrax Earth shade and just highlighted it up. So now he's ready for stage two, the wash with the Agrax Earth shade. So let's have a look at what that looked like. 
As you can see, the Agrax has seeped into all the recesses, it's darkened the model, tied the model's colours together. It also has made the wings exactly like I hoped it would. So not only has it darkened them, it's also given them a sort of stained and tatty look. The sort of thing you would expect to see on this type of scavenger monster. Agrax is one of the highlights of the Citadel range, especially if you're going for this sort of tatty, darker, grimmer look. And I use it on quite a lot of my models. The one downside to it is that it can take some time to dry. However, there are always more models in the pile of shame that you can be getting on with while you're waiting for this one miniature to dry. Now that's done and dry, I'm going to move on to the next stage, which is highlighting back up with the base colours that I used. This is what he looks like after the first highlight, and you can see that this is the point that I actually remember to go back and do the branch. I find that this is generally the most intimidating part of any project, any model that I'm doing as a first highlight. Because I always think, have I gone too far on the difference between the highlight and the shade? You can see as it comes around here on his leg that there's a very dark patch there and it's sort of very uh, much lighter around it. I always think that, oh, I haven't quite done that right, but... Generally, if you add a few more highlights after this, it starts looking much better. Uh, this guy had quite a lot of nice details on his legs. Um, the scales, the scutes there um, really made the model pop. I've feathered a lot of the lines on the longer feathers to make them look more feathery. Um, so now I'm going to do a few more highlights and we'll see what he looks like after that. And here he is after another three highlights. So for the skin to highlight, I used some of more of the rust and I added progressively more centaur skin into it to highlight. And then for the very last highlight, I added a little drop of white to that mixture just to give a really bright final highlight. For the beak, I used the Vallejo uh, Iraqi sand with a little bit of white, progressively more just to bring it up. Um, for the feathers, I used neutral grey with progressively more white added in and then I just for the longer ones just feathered it just a little bit less on the edges each time. Um, for the branch, I used the beige brown but this time instead of highlighting up with white, I used a little bit of Iraqi sand to highlight more and more and then just a final dot of Iraqi sand just to bring out the colour. Um, I also used some of the green ink, just washed on the ends of the branch to make it a, you know, a bit more swampy, a bit more sort of dug in as it were to the swamp. Um, and for his eye, I painted that completely white initially. Then I used some of the uh, glistening blood uh, to give it a kind of glinty, evil look to it. Um, then I give a slight wash with the fiery red, the other um, Revel colour I was using, um, just to make it a little bit brighter. And then I put the tiniest white dot on the edge just to make it look glinting. Um, and so next I'm going to be doing his base. For his base, I used the same basing material technique that I used on the Golem from last week. So it is some uh, substrate, some pet substrate for the likes of tarantulas and lizards. I've added some black paint in there and I've mashed it all together, but not so much black paint that it completely overwhelms the natural colours of it. Then I've just painted some PVA onto the base and just rammed it in there, stuck it all together. There are some gaps, but those will be covered up in a minute by um, the other base materials I'm going to be using. I'll be using some of those stick-on uh, tufts and some static grass. Um, I've also washed a little bit of black paint, watered down into uh, the substrate there, so give some darker patches, make it look a bit more natural. Um, so next I'm going to stick on those little bits and pieces and then he should be close to done. And here he is the finished model. So I've added in the static grass and I've added in the grass tufts. And once those were dry, I added some Vallejo water effects to the base. This sinks in and mixes really well with the substrate. 
um, makes it really glutinous looking, really marshy, really swampy. I really like the effect that that gives for that. Um, I I really enjoyed this model. He's got a lot of detail to him. I really like the effect around his wattle and his neck, uh, the scutes and the scales on his legs and the feathers especially are really nicely picked out. Um, it really didn't take me long to paint this model, two or three hours. It's a actually really simple but effective paint job. Um, and considering this is only the second 3D printed model that I've painted, uh, you can consider me sold on the uh, technique. I uh, think the detail on these models is absolutely fantastic. Um, they required very little clean up. Uh, there was very little in the way of flash or molding defects on them and you can only tell that it's a 3D print from looking at the base because there are some of the sort of ridging artifacts that you get from 3D printing on there but otherwise absolutely fantastic model, really enjoyed it, 5 out of 5, I would quite happily paint some more of these. I hope you enjoyed that video as much as I enjoyed painting the model. Remember to leave a comment below, tell me what you think of the model, tell me what you think of the paint job, and tell me what projects you are also working on. Next up, I'm going to announce the winners of the Fully Cycle Giveaway competition, so stick around, you might be one of the lucky winners. The names of everyone who commented on the video are in the beehive hut there, apart from Fully Cycle, because I kind of assumed they didn't want their models back. And I'm going to draw them out one by one, um, and the first person will win the Hydra and the Paladin, the second person will win the three characters, the third person will win the two monsters, and the fourth lucky person will win the giant spider there. So let's get going. And the person that wins the Paladin and the Hydra, let's have that one. Is Josie Chitty. And then the person who wins, well that one wanted to pop out there, person that wins the three uh, characters is Ryan Wright. And now the two monsters. The winner of that one is The Games Kingdom. And the person that wins the giant spider, drumroll please, that is Was 40. So, congratulations to all the winners there. Sorry if you didn't win anything. I'm sure I'll have another giveaway at some point. If the winners could email me at the.cyberhaggis at gmail.com, information on the screen, and send me your name and address and I will get those posted out to you as soon as I can. I'd like to thank Fully Cycled for the models for this giveaway. They've been a really great company to deal with. I've been talking to them online. They're really friendly. Uh, the delivery was really quick and the 3D prints, as you can see, really speak for themselves. So I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Remember to like and subscribe, hit that notification bell button, and I'll see you again with another video next week. Cheers!